Rendering your scene in different lighting conditions doesn't have to be done by hand. And in this video, I'll show you how you can take a folder full of HDRIs and render your scene in different lighting conditions without breaking a sweat. We'll be using a Blender Python script to do all the work for us, and I'll be guiding you through the process of creating this script from scratch. If you're new to this channel, I'm Victor Stepanoff, and I love helping artists to learn the Python programming language. Let's get started. The very first thing that you need to do is get a folder full of HDRIs. Now, if you already have some HDRIs that you want to use, that's great. But if you don't, I would highly recommend you go to polyhaven.com and grab some nice HDRIs from that website. Select some that you want to experiment with and create a new folder under your home folder. Call it HDRIs and copy over those files that you've downloaded. I'll show you in just a minute how we're going to be accessing those files through a Python script. And let's hop on over to Blender. You can see here I have a scene with a car that I want to render in different lighting conditions. Let's go ahead and open the scripting work workspace. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the right. So it's the very last. Open that, hit new right here, and now you're ready to create a new script. And and let's modify our workspace so we can see the shader editor because that's what the script is going to be working on. I'm going to pull up from here and open the shader. I'll also select world. And now you can see we have a basic setup right here uh, with the background and the world output. And we're going to be modifying this with our script. And the very first thing that we do is we import BPY. And this gives our script access to Blender's functionality so uh, it, Python could press blenders buttons. Next, we need to get the world shader and get the nodes here and clear them out. So we're going to be creating everything from scratch. I, I went ahead and created a new variable called world node tree. And that's just representing the way that Blender thinks of uh, of the shader nodes in the background. So I'm getting from the context and the current scene, I'm getting the world shader node. So this is this might not be straightforward, just don't worry about it. We can figure out as you go if you're just starting out. So we're just grabbing the data that represents this right here, and we're creating a new variable, so we're creating something that's referencing it. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, access the nodes. So each one of these things, right, is nodes, right? And then we're just gonna clear this list. So this is a list of nodes, and we just wanna delete all the nodes. Let's go ahead and run the script. And you can see that it clears out the whole world shader. Now let's start filling this out so we can start working on this new lighting setup. All right, the very next thing that I would do is I would create a path to uh, one of the HDRIs. So we're not going to be working with a whole folder just yet, but I'm going to go ahead and grab a path uh, to that file. So I'm going to need to include, uh, actually, I did not do that, port path lib. So this is a special module that allows Python to work with paths. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the home folder. So this this part right here is going to work on Mac, Linux and Windows, which is great. And as I said in the beginning, you should have a folder called HDRIs in that home folder, which will contain the HDRIs you just downloaded or you had originally this name. And then we're going to point it to one of the files in that folder. I'm um, using this one right here, basically creating a piece of text that we're going to be using and passing around. So, uh, so we're going to pass that in to uh, this part. So this is a special function that allows Blender to load a given image. And we're just passing in the path of this HDRI right here. And now we have a reference to a image that we just loaded. Now let's create an environment texture node and assign this loaded image to that node. Okay, here are the next lines. So we're grabbing again a reference to our node tree and we're adding a new node. So we're, this is like the syntax, the way of defining a new node. And I'm grabbing the uh, shader node text environment. So th I'm getting this from the documentation uh, that I'll link uh, in the description, which allows us to create those nodes from the Python script. Uh, and I'm getting a reference to that new node that we created. And I'm uh, going into one of the properties of this node, and which is image. And I'm assigning the, the image that we just loaded. Let's go ahead and run the script. And you can see that we have created this environment texture node. Uh, and it's referencing uh, that uh, HDRI that we have up here. And now let's go ahead and add the background node that we're going to be plugging this environment texture into. 
Okay, and uh, the next step is pretty similar to the previous one. Again, we're grabbing, uh, we're using the reference uh, to that node tree, creating a new node, and we're creating the background node, getting a reference to it. And then uh, this is optional. I'm just showing you how you would do this if you ever need to override the strength of the background node. So I'm just grabbing the inputs strength and then setting the default value of that node to a one. Let's go ahead and run the script now. And now you can see that we have uh, two nodes uh, right here. So we got the environment texture and the background uh, node right here. But you can see there's a slight problem is that when we run this script that the nodes get put right on top of each other. That's not great. Uh, but we can control this by modifying the X coordinate uh, for this uh, for these nodes. So each time when we create a new node, we're going to assign the uh, current X uh, coordinate value and add some value uh, that will move each node uh, to us to the side. Let me go ahead and define a new variable to track where our current node should be added to. So I've created a new variable called location x, uh, assigned a zero to for now. Uh, and right after we create a new node, let's add, uh, let's say 300 uh, to that value and I'll add it right here. Now, uh, I'm not gonna send, uh, set anything for the environment texture because the location is just gonna be at the very uh, middle of our node graph and I'm going to just set the uh, the location of the background node to this uh, this given location. So I'm getting the location property of our background node and uh, under the location I'm getting the X coordinate and I'm just assigning the variable uh, that we just modified here uh, and let's see uh, how that looks and you can see how oh, after running now our node is shifted uh, to the right right here, exactly uh, allowing us to organize our nodes in a cleaner way. Let's create our final node for the setup, which is the world output node. And it's just gonna go right under here. And as always, pretty straightforward, we're creating a new node. I found the name, uh, the internal name of this node uh, in Blender's documentation, getting a reference to that new node uh, and updating the location uh, using the updated uh, location x uh, location x variable. Let's go ahead and run this. And now you can see that we have our environment texture background and world output node. And now we need to create the links. So connect all these nodes together to produce the lighting for the scene. And I'm going to go ahead and define the links between each node uh, right here. Okay, and here I'm defining the uh, links. Um, I don't really need to use this, but I found it a bit uh, helpful for reading how these links work. So uh, our from node, so where our link is going to be coming from, is the environment texture node. Again, this uh, I'm using the from node here, so you could literally do this if you really wanted to. It's your call, but I just like I kind of feel that like this is uh, slightly more readable, at least for me. Uh, so the from node, we're getting the environment texture node, and we're connecting the output. So uh, we're getting the color from the outputs, uh, this right here. And then we're getting to the two, the two nodes. So where we're going, it's the background node and we're getting the inputs. Again, there's a color input right here. So we need to connect that. Uh, and well, actually, let me go ahead and I'll cut this for a second, run the script. And you can see that uh, our node, our two nodes have been uh, connected. Let's undo that. So now we need to connect the background uh, to the world output node. Again, similar idea here. We're grabbing the background and then we're uh, connecting to the surface. And let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see all our nodes are connected. Okay, now that we have our nodes set up, we can start rendering our uh, scene. But of course, we can't hit the render button in the UI, but that won't really help us in our script setting because we're going to be doing this uh, automatically. So we need to write some code that will press that render button for us. And to do that, we need to figure out first what file we're going to be writing into. So we need to set the name of the rendered image and then hit the like render button through a special BPY call. And here is the code for that. 
Uh, again, we're using the home folder right here. And now I'm using a slightly different folder, which is just renders. This, this could be anything you want. If you're putting your renders in a different place, you can go ahead and update this line. So this is going to be a uh, object uh, pointing to this path. Now, another thing that I wanted to add is a special like timestamp. So uh, each time you're going to render, uh, we need some kind of unique name uh, for our uh, rendered image. And the usual way to do this is just grabbing the like hour, minute and second. That's currently uh, that's the current time of when we're doing the render. Right. And just grabbing it as a piece of text and using that in, in the name of the image that we're going to save. Now I'm using date and time here, so I need to go at the very top and import date and time. So I've imported date and time for this to work. Uh, so we got the timestamp. Now we're going to go ahead and update in the scene the file output. So this is the output that we usually set in the render settings when we're saving the file. Uh, and I'm again grabbing the output folder uh, and I'm creating a new uh, name uh, using F. So this F is a special thing, uh, is a special way to use variables. So, you know, this is a piece of text, right? I'm creating a name of the output image called IMG underscore and then timestamp dot PNG and converting all this into a piece of text. So STR converts this uh, path object into a string that can be easily applied uh, to this file path. Now, at this point, we are ready to hit the render button and this is actually this call so we render and write still let's go ahead and run this code and when i ran this uh, script i had my output set to the ffm peg right here video so uh, make sure that's set to png for my case actually there's a command here and i'm just gonna go ahead and add add that command right there this way that i know that our output is correctly set. So now let's go ahead and run the script. All right, that should have resulted in a new rendered image in the renders folder. And this is what it looks like for me. But before we move on, if you're interested in getting more variations from this setup, I'll be posting an extended version of this video to my email list subscribers, where I'll show how you can actually turn the light of this HDRI to get more variations for your lighting setup. Now, if you're interested in that and getting early access to videos like this and other videos I won't post on the main channel, make sure to sign up to my email list. And if you want to sign up, I'll leave a link in the comments. All right, before we move on, I would like to start organizing our script by adding some functions so we can clean it up just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and define a function here. I'm going to extract the code that does the rendering into a function called render image. And I'm going to go ahead and move the code that applies the HDRI uh, into a function called apply HDRI like so. So uh, I just selected and hit tab if you uh, want to do that indentation uh, on your own. So now we have these two functions. I'm going to go ahead and define a new main function and call these two functions with uh, apply HDRI and render image and I'll just call main right here uh, like that. And if I run the script, nothing should change. We should generate another rendered image. OK, at the beginning of the video, I said that we're going to be working with a folder of HDRIs. Now it's time to get that code set up uh, and we're going to start by extracting the path. So this path right here, uh, this is a great uh, function that applies uh, HDRIs, but the problem is it's currently just hard coded to this one single HDRI path, and that is not good. We need to change that, and I'm going to change that by uh, getting this parameter uh, that now uh, this function is more general. It could uh, take uh, into itself a number of paths, so and this will make this function more general, allowing us to uh, plug in any path to any HDRI we want. This is pretty handy and I'm going to go ahead and create 
a new variable right here, so like that. And I'm creating this variable outside of this function now. Uh, now if I run it, nothing should change. You can uh, you can run it to double check. And I ran it and it still generated that image, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and create a list, all the HRIs in this folder. Okay, let me remove uh, that old code. And now I've updated uh, in the following way. So I'm grabbing the uh, folder uh, path uh, to the HRIs folder, and then I'm using the iter dir, so iterate this directory uh, function that gives me a list of all the uh, path of the images uh, in that uh, folder. And then I'm just passing that image path right into our apply HRI, and then I'm rendering that image now actually i think i need to create a uh convert it into a piece of text so this is going to be an object of a, a path object and i need to still kind of convert it into a piece of text because that's what our uh that that's what blender is going to be expecting when it's going to be loading this image okay let's go ahead and make sure that this script still works now as soon as i press the run script button it's going to use every single hri in this folder and start rendering that image. Okay, now the script is working and creating all those different variations of your rendered scene. And if you wanna to continue to push the variations of your scene, make sure to check out this video right here where I go over how to apply a thousand color palettes to your scene.